For decades, the world has known the effect carbon emissions are having on this planet, and whilst the necessary actions have been beset by politicians, lobbyists and general climate change deniers, the last decade or so has shown a massive social push towards green energy, with an abundance of green energy stocks available to investors such as solar, wind, hydro, geothermal, battery technologies and electric vehicles. Despite this, we're now in the middle of an energy crisis and recent world events have shown just how much our financial markets depend on oil, with barrel prices at an all-time high whilst fearful investors dump their stocks. I think a lot of this is due to the type of investors that have entered the market since the 2020 crash, who are used to stock going up and up and up and can't stand the volatility at the moment, so they are selling out of fear but that presents opportunities if you can break through the noise and think critically. Having done that, I have three investments in the energy sector and I'm gonna go through why I think they offer great opportunities for investors right now. I've said before that when investing, it's best to stop within your field of expertise and work from there. I've previously worked in the motor trade and I've covered the electric vehicle space several times. And it's from here that my research has kept me in touch with the move towards green energy, with electric vehicles being the necessary steps in reducing the world's climate problems. But it's just one piece of a very large and complex problem when it comes to carbon fuels. Oil in particular has always been center of attention when it comes to global warming, particularly when it comes to the USA, who established the dollar as a central currency for oil trade. And this reliance has left their economy susceptible to world events. As much as their government continues to push green initiatives to replace oil, these just don't come to fruition due to compromised politicians with clear links to the carbon fuel trade. In 2020, lockdowns of the pandemic resulted in a worldwide drop in transport and demand for oil. Producers didn't want to shut down and kept supplying when nobody wanted to buy, causing a bottleneck, where the barrels mounted up, storage costs rose, with transport ships having to act as additional storage. On April 20th, oil was being traded in negative territory at $37.63 a barrel. The lack of demand coincided with a push towards green energy alternatives, significantly through ignorant teenagers and vehicle companies led by Tesla who are well ahead in this field, and today are boasting almost a million Model 3 and Y sales in 2021. This hype extended into solar panels, battery technologies and their minerals, lithium, platinum group metal stocks, and let's not forget the hype around hydrogen fuel. Fast forward to today and it seems all that hype has died off, with EV stocks dropping, energy companies trading sideways, and according to the IEA, despite dropping from pre-pandemic forecasts, oil is back on track for continued growth in demand. Oil companies have learnt their lesson from overproduction, and the situation with the power plant that is Russia has highlighted just how reliant Europe has become for them to supply oil and gas. The threat of further sanctions against oil exports from Russia has turned the change needed from a nudge to a shove. But even if we moved on from combustion engines and carbon fuels onto green alternatives today, there is still the problem of the carbon footprint that comes from consumer goods, such as every electric vehicle that is produced, the plastics used to make our electrical components, and the gases that preserve our foods. Just look around your house and you are surrounded by products made from oil. I demonstrated my optimism for green energy when I previously spoke about Gibraltar Industries, and I was burnt on my investment when Biden's infrastructure bill failed to materialise and these types of companies have underperformed ever since. I'm now more sceptical and I've accepted that oil will continue to be relied upon to some degree and the move to green energy isn't going to happen because of social demand but when oil rises to a price that is no longer cost effective for industries and the shift becomes inevitable. But if the alternatives aren't prepared to replace it then we might just be in a world of pain when it comes to energy prices until they are. So my strategy is based on a realistic and balanced view of these industries and here are three companies that I've taken positions in. So for the oil trade, I've looked at the level of traffic for petroleum over the last 70 years and we can see that although the USA continues to grow in oil consumption, the level of imports has been decreasing over the last 17 years to the lowest since 1991 whilst production and exports has increased substantially. With a history of worldwide events causing disruptions to the industry, I'm inclined to look to profitable companies who are able to operate and grow within their own domestic markets and capitalize on the future demand for exportation. Enter Devon Energy. Based in Oklahoma, Devon Energy has been operating domestically in the USA since 1971 in the exploration, development and production of oil, natural gas and liquid natural gas. 
They have been expanding rapidly through various billion dollar acquisitions over the years, with the most recent being with WPX Energy last year. This gave them assets in the Widderstone Basin, which they added to the rest of their sites in the Eagle Ford, Powder River Basin and Anadarko Basins and Delaware Basin, which alone saw a 34% growth in quarter 4 from quarter 1 to 416,000 barrels of oil equivalent a day. MBOED stands for barrels of oil equivalent per day and is a method of measurement for gas and oil products where one barrel of oil is said to be equal in energy to 6,000 cubic feet of gas. This makes it a universal method of measurement for comparing the production performance of companies who operate in the gas and oil industry. making them the main contributor of total production of 611,000 barrels a day for quarter four. Devon Energy boasts improvements in their operations over the years, namely an 86% improvement in drilling and a 168 improvement to completions, bringing their cost per foot down by 41% since 2018, and they project for 2022 to achieve 570 to 600,000 barrels a day. Devon have set targets for 2030 to reduce their greenhouse gases and methane emissions by 50% and 65% respectively, eliminating flaring and they expect to hit net zero greenhouse gases by 2050. As for the financials, revenues have been growing exponentially over the last couple of years, with continued growth over 2021 and for quarter four, net income hit $1.5 billion, which is $2.23 a share with a core earnings of $935 million, or $1.39 per diluted share. They reported a quadrupling of their cash flow across the year to $1.6 billion in quarter four, which is a 173% increase from the beginning of the year. And that totals $4.9 billion for the whole year, more than tripling their 2020 performance. And their $2.9 billion of free cash flow represents a 50-year high, and they expect this increase to continue over 2022. As a result of their increased cash flow, they have reduced outstanding debt by $1.2 billion and expect to clear 60% of debt obligations by 2030. They have been active in a stock repurchase program with $589 million of shares bought in quarter four, and the total campaign has been increased by 60% to $1.6 billion, representing 5% of outstanding shares. With their impressive year, the board announced a 45% increase to their fixed dividend to 16 cents a share and an increase to their variable dividend represents 50% of free cash flow, bringing their next dividend total to $1 a share and an annual yield of 8%, which is excellent news to investors who love a dividend. As with the negatives, a massive increase in oil prices is a risk, with CEO Rick Menkriff stating that he didn't expect a drop in demand from customers until oil hits $120 a barrel. It sounds almost prophetic given the current oil prices, but we have to remember that this assumed a gradual increase in oil, not one pumped up by sudden world events that the industry didn't prepare for, which means we may have to tolerate higher prices or they could collapse suddenly if the situation changes overnight. At around a $58 mark, Devon may not appear cheap at first, and if you compare the latest figures on production, they aren't the biggest producer by far, and their revenue makes them one of the underdogs. But these charts don't show much disruption, so if we look at growth instead, they are top of the charts in terms of revenue, averaging growth of 60% year on year, and 35.38% each quarter so far. Whilst if we look at profits, again, they are holding their ground with annual growth, also averaging 56.3% growth for 2021. Considering their financial growth, massive cash flows and metrics compared to the others, trading at 14.26 times earnings, but only 8.5 times future earnings, I think they hold some decent value for someone wanting some exposure to oil that hasn't already been priced in. There's also the added benefit of a market leading dividend and the safety of a company operating within their domestic western markets. My next stop may not surprise anyone who saw my recent video on the shipping industry where I mentioned LNG. LNG stands for liquid natural gas. This is when a natural gas, typically methane, has been cooled down to its liquid form, where it takes up one six hundredth of the volume of its gaseous form, making it easier to store and transport. And knowing is half the battle. 
Statistically, Europe has been sourcing around 40% of their natural gas from Russia, but over the last decade they have received increasing criticism for this increasing reliance on Russian gas, and they have been trying to move away to LNG as an alternative. A lot of this has to do with Russia's 2009 financial conflict with Ukraine, which caused them to suspend shipments for 20 days, and Europe adapted by expanding the number of LNG regasification facilities, with currently 21 in the EU, 3 in the UK, and 4 in Turkey. Europe and the UK have also been sourcing their LNG for locations such as Norway, but Norway's only large-scale LNG plant in Hammerfest caught fire in 2020 and they have struggled to restock production since, facing delays up to May. According to data from Sidagaz, Europe remains reliant on the import of natural gas, making up 76% of all natural gas imports largely through pipelines from Russia and Norway, whilst 26% of gas comes from LNG. In 2021, the US became the largest provider of that LNG requirement, providing 26%, 3.4 billion cubic feet per day in November. And the latest reports in January this year shows they are now supplying half of Europe's LNG, increased to 6.5 billion cubic feet per day. LNG tends to be more expensive than pipeline gas in shorter distances, but it can be cheaper and less problematic to transport over longer distances than building a multi-billion dollar pipeline. With Germany following Biden's call to kill the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, the company firing the staff, Shell pulling out of the project and rumours of possible bankruptcy, it's fair to say the project is currently dead and Europe may be increasing their demand of LNG and that means future opportunity. Enter Cotera Energy. This company has a long history as Cabot Oil and Gas before merging with Simorax Energy last October to form their current manifestation. Like Devon, they also operate in the Delaware Basin along with other sites across Texas and New Mexico. They released their 2021 financials last month and it was a great year for the company with increases in oil productions benefiting largely from the merger which increased their oil revenues by $660 million and brought LNG to their production portfolio along with another $243 million in extra revenue. Their daily year-on-year -year oil and gas production is up and the company reported 660,000 barrels of oil equivalent a day which is higher than Devon but from their oil and gas portfolio it is their LNG production that is of particular interest. LNG is up by 7 million barrels for 2021 and the company is producing 77,000 barrels a day and the $243 million this segment brought in the merger contributed 7% of their operating revenue. In addition, the reserves measure LNG at over 200 million barrels and the total reserves at almost 3 billion barrels of oil equivalent. And as this has been increasing year on year, it represents Katera's ability to meet future demands. The company has benefited massively from the rise in oil and gas prices and were able to bring in $1.6 billion in cash flow in the fourth quarter, a 173% increase from quarter one that brings their 2021 operating cash flow to $4.9 billion, more than three times a year before and generated $2.9 billion of free cash flow. From their quarter four and 2022 outlook report, they were called 686,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day, which represents 3,123 million cubic feet of natural gas production per day. Their success has resulted in over a billion in free cash flow, for which CEO and President Thomas Jordan has reiterated their goal to return 50% of this back to investors, starting with a $1.25 billion share buyback program, which represents 7% of shares and a total dividend of 56 cents a share, representing a 10% annualized yield, and that's payable in March. <laughs> As for 2022, they are projecting to average 600 to 635,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day, which is higher than Devon Energy, but Katera has the advantage of their high LNG production. The stock is up 36.6% over the last year, and compared to their LNG specialist competitors, they are trading cheap at 5.84 times future earnings and a PEG ratio of 0.14, and even cheaper when compared to the oil and gas industry stocks from before. I can feel Greta Thunberg giving me her death stare. So let's talk about the renewable energy industry.
Despite receiving plenty of media coverage as an industry in demand, renewable energy tends to underperform the market. Despite many green energy companies, recycling, solar, wind, there just hasn't been enough investment despite the political and social push towards their use. It seems politicians don't want to move away from oil and consumers don't want to move away from cheap fuels. It's a shame because if green energy was developed enough, it would be more cost effective and have more wide scale application. It's, it, you only need about 100 miles by 100 miles of solar panels to power the entire United States. Data from the International Energy Outlook from the U.S. Energy Information Administration is projecting a shift towards renewable energies that would outpace petroleum and other liquids, overtake natural gas and coal by around 2040. So this is an opportunity for someone looking for the long term for the most benefit, but recent events seem to have given the industry a much needed boot up the ass and we might finally see some growth in the short term. So my stance as always is to avoid buying on the hype and speculation, but look for a renewable energy company that is well established with a working and profitable business model that I don't mind holding long term until the market turns in my favour. Enter the Renewables Infrastructure Group. This Guernsey-based company managed by Infrared and RES invests in offshore wind, solar and battery energy projects across the UK and Northern Europe. They currently hold interest in over 70 projects including Ireland, France, Sweden and Germany and recently they invested in solar operations in Spain. Their investment policy is aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and Europe's transition to net zero carbon economies, backed by the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference, of which they participate in active debates. The EU's target of 35% renewable energy by 2030 means TRIG has a foundation for business growth in the future, in addition to the continued acquisitions of renewables and related infrastructure across the UK and Europe, and the likely benefits from COP27 in 2022. As energy prices have already increased 166% over 2021 and the very likelihood of continued increases as companies struggle to meet demand and world events, renewable energy is becoming increasingly more attractive. In the UK, energy prices are regulated by Ofgem, who on the 3rd of February lifted the energy price cap in the UK by 54%. This is expected to have a devastating effect on energy prices across the country, where increased gas prices and demand from Asia for LNG led to 33 energy companies collapsing over the last 14 months, which further reduced competition in the market and customers are already seeing explosive increases in their energy bills. Trig's goal is to provide sustainable returns for the future and their projections are based on fixed pricing structures for each megawatt. In 2021, they generated enough clean energy to power 1.3 million homes and a reduction of 1.4 million tonnes of CO2. Their latest sustainability update boasts an operational portfolio of 1.7 gigawatts, which they expect to extend to 2.2 gigawatts once current projects complete. A gigawatt an hour is a unit of energy representing 1 billion watt hours or 1 million kilowatt hours and used as a measure of large electricity power stations. It's equal to 1.3 million horsepower and enough to power 750,000 average homes. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. Now 11% of Trick's portfolio represents projects in development, such as four soda projects in the Iberian Peninsula which are expected to be operational by the end of 2022, and these will more than double the company's solar generation capacity. Despite the potential of this company, the stock has been trading sideways for the last two years and took a massive hit during the pandemic crash, losing most of its value for several days. And there could be several reasons for this. Their investments have been funded by investors through frequent share issuing, with 440 million fundraised last year. Project funding has been dropping since 2020, from their £600 million peak in 2019 to £479 million in 2021, so they have been impacted by the financial fallout, much like any business. From projects, there has been a significant growth in power generated each year, and only a slight tapering off in 2021, where they reported 4,125 gigawatts, a 13% miss from their target of 4,719, and overall performance was 12.6% below their projections. CO2 reduction is proportional, which makes sense given they need the power to replace fossil alternatives. Wind power is generally low performing across the industry and represents 86% of their portfolio. 
The company is planning to rectify this by diversifying their production through their solar projects, which could rectify their power generation. But the financials tell us something special. Revenue has been growing steadily, except for the dip in 2020, which is expected, but merging this with net income shows that their net income is higher than revenue, which is interesting. Profits have been growing in similar fashion, hitting over £172 million in 2021, and the company reported using £145 million to pay down project-level debt last year. If we look at how their income is generated, we have gains from the company's projects, which were growing before the pandemic and look to be returning to form, close to £70 million in 2021. But more significant is that if we look at interest income, we have a clear exponential growth pattern, the graph that every investor wants to see as each project adds on another long term income source. And this is represented by continual growth in their assets, along with growth in shareholder equity. So even though their funding through stock dilution is a negative and impedes their stock growth, their portfolio has clear long term benefits as they expand this across energies and regions and they are improving their volatility and preparing for increasing energy demands. Even if their project production slows down, the power of their investments plus the rising cost of energy means that revenues will continue to increase nonetheless. And shareholders still saw a total 11.3% return last year based on stock performance and a 6.84 pence dividend, which at the current price represents a yield of 5.13%, which is worth getting excited about. <music> So while the stock has been battered down, I'm happy to hold this stock as a long term value play as the market warms up, along with the planet, to renewable energy growth. With the price of oil being pumped up to record highs, a volatile market and obscurity to how the Russian Ukraine crisis will play out, I'm not keen to jump on the bandwagon of short term oil investments, which could backfire if it changes suddenly. There is no one size fits all scenario for energy needs across the world, so I think the best way to play this is through a balanced and diversified approach across different industries and choosing established, profitable and substantial companies. Devon and Katara, being US companies, offer good growth opportunities in a country still massively reliant on oil and likely to see continued increase in LNG export demand. Trig, being a UK company, might put off US investors, but I would encourage those to think logically about the benefit of diversifying a portfolio across different markets. And when it comes to renewables, the US government has proved shamefully unreliable in having any green developments put through Congress, largely due to senators being corrupted by their links to carbon fuel. A shadow element of all these stocks is their high cash flow, stock buybacks and high dividend yield. Although investors should generally be wary of high dividends and speculative companies, I've established how these particular companies are growing and have a strategy to meet modern market demands. The fundamentals suggest future growth hasn't yet been fully priced in and that makes them cheap value stocks. And that's my take on the energy industry. Do you agree? If you have any thoughts or a company you think I should be covering, comment below, let me know. And consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos as I continue to cover my entire portfolio. Until next time.